one day at a time. <laughs> he does not want me to sing that song. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Uh, hello. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. And good evening. Whatever your time of day is when you tune in. I'm Linda. Uh, I'm Eric, and the Lord bless you. And we're here to read. We're reading through the Bible. And we're using uh, with our daily bread our and their schedule. Daily bread. And we are on and day 40. This is what it looks like for the winter. Hey, get that out of there. Fade it out. <laughs> <laughs> we're on day 40. And that means we're reading Leviticus chapter 6 yep. and chapter 7. Yep. Well, we'll stop partway like through star. chapter 7. He's got my Bible scribbled on all over the place. And, and that's day 40, 6 day and 7. 40. We're going to go uh, oh, partly through day seven because we're going to do the other part of it, the second segment. Yes. And our condolences go out today to our daughter, husband's family. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, my daughter's husband's grandfather, died this morning. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. A yeah. wonderful, fine Christian man. Almost 90 years old. Played the violin wonderfully. Mm -hmm. A great man. I told my son-in-law I really respected his father, grandfather. What a man. Sweet, sweet, kind, handsome man. Yes. Really nice man. Nice family. Yeah. Anyhow, here we go. And he's with the Lord. Yeah. Dancing so, and laughing and singing. We're going to pray. One day at a time. That's what he said. We're going, going to pray. Okay. We're going to pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your love that you love you so generously upon us. Yes. In so many ways, we provide our daily bread and our daily health. And Lord, even when it is the end of our lifetime and you comfort the family. Yes. And we pray that for the, the families today that are <clears throat> grieving. Mm -hmm. um, so, Lord, we lift them up before you and, and ask for that, that you yes. comfort them. And anyone else, Lord, who is struggling or grieving as you tune in and, and read with us through the Word, may you experience God richly and greatly this day in all that you are and all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm so thankful for the hope that I have in uh, Creator God. Who loves us and who wants to have fellowship with us and relationship with us who wants us to enjoy um, heaven which is paradise extreme we we see that very strongly in Exodus here where we just read through about God wanting to communicate with the Israelites yes with his the people. people he wanted so much but they were fearful of him. Yes. and uh, that must have really hurt him at least we think of that in the physical human sense um, but we don't know well, we don't know the heart of the depth of God many passages of scripture call him father God and our own children often don't have the same values and beliefs and they grow up and they move away and they get busy with their life and we want and relationship with them and sometimes, well, sometimes our values, hearts are sorrowful for them. Yeah, for that sometimes reason. their values estrain them from us, and we um, phone and wine and hint that we'd like to. I phone and wine you and phone. hint. You okay. okay. And, and that I would love them to come and visit and have a relationship and oh. know me more than just mother, but as as person with thoughts and feelings and passions and yeah. creativity yeah. and you know to know the person me not just mommy <laughs> mommy so we're okay. going to read here we go six. Leviticus chapter 6 in the NIV. NIV the Lord said to Moses if anyone sins and is unfaithful to the Lord by deceiving his neighbor about something untrusted and trusted to him or left in his care or stolen or if he cheats him or if he finds lost property and lies about it, or if he swears falsely, or if he commits any other, any such sin that people may do. When he thus sins and becomes guilty, he must return what he has stolen or taken by extortion, or what was entrusted to him, 
or the lost property he found, or whatever it was he swore falsely about, he must make restitution in full, add a fifth of the value to it, and give it all to the owner. Add a fifth or add a fifth? Add a fifth. Add a fifth. On the day he presents his guilt offering, and as a penalty he must bring to the priest, that is, to the Lord, his guilt offering, a ram from the flock, one without defect and of proper value. In this way the priest will make atonement for him before the Lord, and he will be forgiven for any of those things he did that made him guilty. Okay, now we're going to burn again. The burnt More offering. More burning. Little markers falling out here. It says, verse 8, The Lord says to Moses, Give Aaron and his sons this command. These are the regulations for the burnt offering. The burnt offering is to remain on the altar hearth throughout the night till morning, and the fire must be kept burning on the altar. The priest shall then put on his linen clothes with linen undergarments next to his body, and shall remove the ashes of the burnt offering that the fire have consumed on the altar, and place them beside the altar. Then he is to take off these clothes and put on other clothes and carry the ashes outside the camp to a place that is ceremonially clean. The fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must not go out. Every morning the priest is to add firewood and arrange the burnt offering on the fire and burn the fat of the fellowship offering on it. The fire must be kept burning on the altar continually. It must not go out. So like they t this 365, they had this fire going. Yep, so they had wow. night shifts back then. Wow, no wonder it was a whole family thing to be a priest. Like mm -hmm. They had shift work on the altar. Yep. Oh my goodness. Round Next. the clock duty. The grain offering. The grain offering. Verse 14. These are the regulations for the grain offering. Aaron's sons are to bring it before the Lord in front of the altar. The priest is to take a handful of fine flour and oil together with all the incense on the grain offering and burn the memorial portion on the altar as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Aaron and his sons shall eat the rest of it but it is to be eaten without yeast in a holy place. They are to eat it in the courtyard of the tent of meeting. It must not be baked with yeast. I have given it as their share of the offerings made to me by fire. Like the sin offerings and the guilt offerings, it is most holy. Any male descendant of Aaron may eat it. It is his regular, regular share of the offerings made to the Lord by fire for the generations to come. Whatever touches them will become holy. Hmm. He says that yeast thing again, eh? You're really stuck on this yeast thing. 19. Well, I never <coughs> noticed how often it's mentioned before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Read on. I knew that when they were fleeing Egypt that they had uneven bread, and I knew it was part of some of the feasts. Of the ceremony of the Passover. The ceremony, but it's a part of everything. The Lord also said on verse 19 to Moses, this is the offering Aaron and his sons are to bring to the Lord on the day he is anointed. A tenth of an ephah of fine flour is a regular grain offering. Half of it in the morning and half of it in the evening. Prepare it with oil on a griddle. Bring it well mixed and present the grain offering broken in pieces as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. The son who is to succeed him as anointed priest shall prepare it. It is the Lord's regular share and it is to be burnt completely. Every grain offering of a priest shall be burned completely. It must not be eaten. And now we're going to sin offering. The sin offering. Verse 24. It, this is like repetitive, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Read all this. Must really. It's really important. Yeah. The Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron and his sons, These are the regulations for the sin offering. The sin, or, sin offering is to be slaughtered before the Lord in the place the burnt offering is slaughtered. It is most holy. The priest who offers it shall eat it. It is to be eaten in a holy place, in the courtyard of the tent of meeting. Whatever touches any of the flesh will become holy. And if any of the blood is spattered on a garment, you must wash it in a holy place. The clay pot the meat is cooked in must be broken. But if it is cooked in a bronze pot, the pot is to be scoured and rinsed with water. Any male in a priest's family may eat it. It is most holy, but any sin offering whose blood is brought into the tent of meeting is 
to make atonement is the, in the holy place must not be eaten. It must be burned. Chapter 7. The guilt offering. The guilt offering. These are the regulations for the guilt offering, which is most holy. The guilt offering is to be slaughtered in the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered, and its blood is to be sprinkled against the altar on all sides. <coughs> all its fat shall be offered, the fat tail and the fat that covers the inner parts, both kidney and the fat on them, on them near the loins, and the covering of the liver, which is to be removed with the kidneys. The priest shall burn them on the altar as an offering made to the Lord by fire. It is a guilt offering. And any male in a priest's family may eat it, but it must be eaten in a holy place. It is most holy. The same law applies to both the sin offering and guilt offering. They belong to the priests who make atonement with them. The priests who offer burnt offering for anyone may keep its hide for himself. Every grain offering baked in an oven or cooked in the pan or on a griddle belongs to the priest who offers it. And every grain offering, whether mixed with oil or dry, belong equally to the sons of Aaron. So I see why he's repeating all this, because now he's telling what they do with what's left. Now he's explaining that after you do all this, the priest's family get to keep the extra stuff, right? These are the regulations for the fellowship offering a person may present to the Lord. If he offers it as an ex expression of thankfulness, then along with this thank offering, he is to offer cakes of bread made without yeast and mixed with oil, wafers made without yeast and spread with oil, and cakes of fine flour, well kneaded and mixed with oil. Along with his fellowship offering of thanksgiving, he is to present an offering with cakes of bread made with yeast. He is to bring one of each kind as an offering, a contribution to the Lord. It belongs to the priest who sprinkles the blood of the fellowship offering. The meat of his fellowship offering of thanksgiving must be eaten on the day it is offered. He must leave none of it till morning. Now verse uh, 16. If, however, his offering is the result of a vow, or is a free will offering, the sacrifice shall be eaten on the day he offers it, but anything left over may be eaten on the next day. Any meat of, of a sacrifice left over till the third day must be burned up. If any meat of the fellowship offering is eaten on the third day, it will not be accepted. It will not be credited to the one who offered it, for it is impure, and persons who eat any of it will be held responsible. Meat that touches anything ceremonially unclean must not be eaten. It must be burned up. As for other meat, anyone, anyone ceremonially clean may eat it. But if anyone who is unclean eats any meat of the fellowship offering belonging to the Lord, that person must be cut off from his people. If anyone touches something unclean, whether human uncleanliness or an unclean animal of any, of any unclean detestable thing, and then eats any of the meat of the fellowship offering belonging to the Lord, that person must be cut off from his people. Ooh. This is serious stuff. Okay, yeah. now we have 13, 30, 40. So we get to discuss this a little bit before the video stops. What do you think? Well, I'm having a little bit of struggle with there's a burnt offering, there's a grain offering, a sin offering, a guilt offering, fellowship, a fellowship offering. offering. Um, it's hard wow. to keep track of all this. And multiple times he, he describes it, so it's really important. So, so far it's uh, clean animals uh, uh, without blemish, male or female, mm -hmm. or grain that's wholesome, or doves. Or doves. Um, and then you mix salt with the offering, you burn it on fire. The priest can eat some, but they can't eat. The only one the people can eat are the the fellowship offering, the people who made the offering can eat it, as long as they didn't touch things that were unclean. Hmm. So this is the only one the people got to eat the food that was burnt, like the normal people. And the priest got to eat the, the stuff that God didn't eat, that wasn't God's portion of the other parts. Is that some of that, David? Okay, next part two, we're going to talk about eating the fat and blood.